Uh, Michelle says there's time for questions if there are, if there are any. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nadine. Can you the role of and did you hear why there would be a difference potentially between the role of the humanities and, and the sciences? Sound like that was implicit. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and the literature sort of seems to point that. I mean, and, and part of that is, is, is Bly's argument that it's better for information. You know, and, and for, for disseminating information, that it's a form that allows you to do that and plays on students' memory and allows you to give information. And that seems to speak to something potentially outside of what we do. Um, but uh, as I said, my, my evidence is more anecdotal in thinking about it. But I think it, it I mean, and it has worked since the beginning. I mean, if, if you ask the, the question way back, uh, in the 1930s or whatever about the humanities being dead, you certainly would have gotten a different answer then. So the form worked then for the humanities. And, uh, and the idea for me then is a sense that it needs to be reborn in different ways. I'm, I'm wondering about things that have worked too in terms of the sciences and, and, and dissemination. Um, and that is uh, the sense potentially of a, a contemporary form of online and, and video transformation. And, and I, I don't know yet if that, Josh Landy uh, in IHOM had his class taped this year to try that as an experiment. And I don't know yet if it works in the same way. We've seen it. I mean, they've done it in engineering for years. Yes, successfully. And, and so that's one of the things you know, we'll, we'll have to look at it and see. But that, those are some of the differences in just the type of learnings potentially that take place. But you, you, seem, you had some doubt there. Nadim. Well, I was, I think of humanities as actually a medium of philosophy. It has a matter of most of the world is humanity. So that may lead me because I conceive of philosophy. Um, Lanier is shaking his head back here. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I mean, I, th I think you're right. There's definitely information that's being conveyed. And I, I think in some ways the differences potentially aren't as great because certainly in terms of be it in economics, in terms of the social sciences, or be it in, in terms of the natural sciences, you're also conveying critical thinking. So they both happen there. You know, in, 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 in the dynamics of how they do, uh, there's probably as much many similarities as there are differences. But philosophy is interesting, I think, because you're, you're in some ways, you know, creating a dialectical argument, too, that they have to follow as a challenge and the student. Jamarcus has a hand in the back. I, I can't hear you. <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yes, is a, is a simple answer. And, and is that a good thing is what we want to discover. Are there things that can, by looking at technology or using it, help you, you know, uh, in terms of thinking critically about what you're looking at on, in, in, in terms of the class? Are there ways to do that? I'm not sure, that, as I said, that PowerPoint does. But I, I mean, what I'm hoping we can find here and, and, and to discover, and the, and the President's statement on this was for us to be bold. So hopefully we can in terms of imagining what those utilities are. I think one of them that we'll see is, is thinking about space. I mean, what is the classroom of the future? And what is particularly the humanities classroom or the large lecture classroom? You know, and what should it be? Potentially a space like, uh, Rob, you want, you know, that breaks up and has different sections where students can talk amongst. And I see Daphne back there. She likes that idea as well. You know, and, and, and so that idea that uh, we can have um, space for, to use Aisha's word, reflection within there, maybe that's something that a classroom, the space can help 
uh, us think about. And I think part of our initiative may be to think about space as well, as well as that, that sense of technology. I mean, invariably, in, a, in terms of a lecture, because of how we think and how we talk, you are going to get distracted at some point. It's, it, you know, that, but how, how you deal with it and how you come back, or how the professor allows for space to think and pull you back, you know, and whether technology can help in that is, 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 is a good question. Yes? Here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it was all about the numbers of majors and minors not being up to snuff, and, and I, I feel like being in classics, which is sort of one of the obscure humanities uh, <laughs> subdivisions, you know, what would happen if, if the lecture course disappeared? How would we uh, get our message out to students who might not otherwise be exposed to the classics except through, say, Greek mythology? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good point. And, and, and that sense of how students discover some of the humanities here at Stanford is, is, is interesting. And often they come to them later. I mean, so it's like something like linguistics, for example. I don't know the average freshman. I, I certainly didn't, in high school, didn't know what linguistics was. Right? So I mean, so that sense of being here, taking classes, you discover it. And the lecture is being a key. Right now, um, one of the questions that Seuss is certainly looking for is that question of how uh, IHOM and what we do there, how does that feed into, you know, and, and certainly in terms of the number of classics majors has gone up in recent years, you know, and, and that's been a concerted effort by the department um, in a variety of ways and, and in teaching a message that certainly here, the, the sense of classics matter and can form so many things in terms of, of what you can do. Um, and uh, it, I mean, just that, that, that notion of uh, the, uh, students coming late sometimes in the humanities happens too in drama. You know, they come, they come late to it. I, I, they may do it and dabble and then figure they have enough. I, I, it's hard sometimes convincing your parent that uh, you're going to spend $50,000 to major in drama. <laughs> Even though, as I'd say at graduation, what can you do with a drama degree? Anything you want. So, um, but uh, I had one student come to me and said, Professor Elam, I prayed over it. I'm going to be a drama major. <laughs> And what can you say to that, you know? <laughs> right. Martha, there was a hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, and that sense of the dynamic that happens and how it will change the flow of audience, I think, is, is critical to that, that sense of liveness of lecture. And I'm wondering, in terms of that, certainly, I mean, um, and, and Daphne has done some wonderful work in thinking about how lectures work, you know, online. And, and I'm wondering, too, in terms of our online culture, whether they'll help bring back the lecture. So for example, TED lectures, other things we see in terms of line, that people get used to that sort of form. I wonder if that, that sense of that will inform and people will want something for someone to talk to them live. But that, that, that sense of the live inter interchange and what can happen there, yeah, is, is, is so dynamic and fascinating. Yes? Well, I was struck by your comment about computers, right, for uh, many reasons I encourage students to bring their computer to class, not the least of which, if I can't out-compete uh, Facebook, then I'm not doing my job. <laughs> so, uh, so I can use that as sort of a, a guideline. As far as online lectures, we put our lectures in the medical school online, and over half of the class decides that they're going to you know, watch it from their pajamas. So, uh, and it works. Yeah, no, I, the, the thing that I would, I, I'd say you know, about um, laptops, I mean, yes, I, I would like to say that I'm, I'm going to be stimulating enough that they'll, they're going to listen to me. But, but as I said to Jamarcus, who um, took, took our class, a, 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 what, two years ago now? A year ago. Yeah. Um, that uh, that, that you know, you, your mind is going to slip off at some point. Um, what happens sometimes with uh, computers, right, is that as that screen flashes, that it's uh, potentially distracting to other people. 
you know, not so much, I mean, maybe not to you, and you're going to play off it and multitask in your way. So that, it, it's a matter, in some way, of a consideration for others. When I taught at the University of Maryland, I had no problem back then, you know, in their computer or laptop age and somebody falling asleep in class because I, I, I did it myself one. You know, I mean, so it was, I mean, if I, I could understand that response, but I mean, that, that sense of disturbing someone else, I think, and their experience in the class is something that we, we want to think about within that. There was a hand back there and then here. Oh, that's great. That's a great question. And, and part of the effort in terms of the, the thinking about uh, technology is exactly that. So one of the things that, that Daphne has done within her class and using and is that, that the class becomes a different experience. They've watched her outside, and then they come into the class, and it's a different experience. And we're going to try that. Dick Zier is, 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 and um, uh, Brad Osgood, among others, are going to uh, do it, are going to try it in terms of classes, and we'll see how that can do. So faculty time is valuable, you know, and we want to think about you know, the utility of that. And so it may be that. But what I would love is that faculty time is not freed up for them to disappear and do research, right? But it's going to be somehow reinvested in thinking about this enterprise of the exchange with students and finding new ways to do that. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, well, how much did you, uh, you know, how much did you enjoy working with a professor or, uh, did you, uh, you know, it's sort of the intermediate outcomes that are, to me, not the important outcomes. I just wonder if you have any reaction to that. Sure. I, I mean, and I don't mean to imply, or if I did, that uh, the important thing is what's happening in the classroom. I, I, what I'm, the dynamic in the classroom is going to inform what's going to be carried outside the classroom, both in terms of the immediate sense of what happens in terms of the knowledge they've gained, their understanding the course materials, their engagement with it that they're going to take into the section, as well as the long-term question of how they become citizens. I think that where we are in terms of SUS, and in, in terms of if I had to put undergraduate education at Stanford and what I feel we're trying to do in a simple phrase, I would say that what we're trying to do now through SUS and going forward is to redefine and reimagine liberal education. That's what we're trying to do. And to that end, all of the things come under that, the sense of global citizenship, the relationship to where we want students to be and think about, the values that we want to impact in terms of training students, the skills that we want to set them to have, as well as their ability to function within the classroom and beyond. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to do now, and that's sort of it, it behind Seuss's mission or my understanding for, of it. You know, in terms of what we do at the VPUE, essentially what we're trying to do is, is, con is to connect students and faculty, you know, in so many different ways. The research experience is, is fundamental to that, and it's something we do here at Stanford different than others, and, and profound learning happens in that as many as of, of you have conducted, you know, individual research projects. So all of that, I think, I, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. And we get caught up in, you know, the, the sense of the dynamics just in the classroom sometime and need to think about beyond and what's going to happen. Uh, we've got time, I think, for one more, uh, Pat, and then Marianne. Mm -hmm. Use some heat to take that risk of stopping um, the on, ongoing uh, arc of a particular lecture in favor of solving a problem or using something that's happened in the classroom to make sense out of that moment. 
Thanks. Pat, Pat is one of the great teachers of improvisation and has, uh, has a wonderful book on it that, uh, that, that, that talks about it in, outside of just the classroom, but in thing, terms of thinking it for, for life. I think, I mean, yes, and that, it, it relates to Martha's point that somehow within that space, you know, that you have to be able to break down and, and, and relate to a student and find a new path sometimes. That's why, I, as I said, I like asking questions. I, I know basically where they're going to go, but sometimes something, somebody throws a gem you know, in terms of an answer, you know, that, and, and that, that, that helps sort of shape it. But that idea or the willingness for what we call, in, for improvisation, the willingness of what we call in theater, and you know, that sense of that happy accident, you know, that, that can happen in lecture, that wonderful moment, you know, where learning happens. I think, you know, that, that what we need to understand, right, is that the lecture is a process not simply for the students. This relates to your point too, Nadine, but for us, right? That, it, that we're involved in this learning process and to allow for that to happen to the, the faculty within the process as well. Is there one more hand or we, we oh, sorry, Marianne. Oh, so, sorry. I, 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 he, he, it's seniority, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, in the left side, Dick. Mm -hmm. I think it's really about inspiration rather than information. And what matters is whether or not you can inspire people. And this is the thing about technology. If technology helps us inspire people, I'm for it. When it mm -hmm. gets in the way, I'm against it. And then we shouldn't just fall in love with technology because it's itself it sounds like it's gifted. It has to produce this sense of the student wanting to go and discover something for the student's self. Yeah. No, I mean, that sense of inspiration is, 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 is great. Now, the idea of thinking about how we do it or bottle it or how it happens in a lecture, I don't, I mean, and it was interesting, again, reading Bly. Bly doesn't think that that can happen. It's, but I, I also disagree with him there. Um, uh, but, <laughs> thank, thank you, Roger. <laughs> no, I, I mean, the, I, I, I think one of the things there that we had with the meeting on technology that you were present, um, there was uh, uh, talking to Dan Stack from your department, and he mentioned a, a professor in chemistry that said, use no technology, and he lectures in Chem 31, and we all know that Chem 31 is a really hard to be you know, a great teacher in because of the context of it. Um, it's, it's a required course in some ways and fits in uh, so many things on the way to pre-med, et cetera. Um, and everything I've heard said that this guy is just amazing. So what does he have? How does he inspire? Can we bottle that? Can we train someone to do that? Or is that an individual? And that's, I think, part of the process of thinking about what we do in terms of lectures. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, Mary, that I will, you, I should stop. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. And congratulations again to CTL. Thank you so very, very much, Vice Provost Harry Elam. You delivered the three I's. You did deliver information, inspiration, and interaction. Ah. So <laughs> thank you so much. If no. the lecture was on life support, I think you just revived it. <laughs> so uh, and also, oops, President Hennessy left before I could thank him for that lovely introduction and thanks to both of you for the kind words about CTL and myself. Now I feel the same pressure you did, Harry. Gosh, we're going to have to live up to this now. So, and I want to thank all of you in the audience so much for being here and helping us celebrate. It's just been wonderful. But if I can have one more moment of your time, I don't know if you've had the chance to notice, but there's something on the back of your program. And that's because an anniversary should not only be about the past and about the present, but an anniversary should be about the future. What, what, what is going to happen next? What, what should we be living up to next? And with the help of CTL's first faculty fellow, Professor Tom Ehrlich, who is the former dean of the law school at Stanford, the Center for Teaching and Learning has been working on a vision for the next 35 years, although I hope practically it's probably just the next five years. <laughs> and we would love your input to this. Your 
you're the ones we're doing this for. So on, on the back of your, the program, you'll see that there are a couple of questions. And if it turns out as you are eating and thinking that you feel like it, uh, please jot a few things down here. Or if you'd like to send us something later by email, we're actually going to send you something. Um, since this is meant to be a celebration, so we don't want to give you too much homework. But in case you are one of those multitaskers and you want to eat and talk and fill out something, uh, we would love your feedback. We would just love it. So please um, share your ideas and suggestions with us. And the formal program is now over. And again, we thank all of you so much. Uh, it was wonderful to have this kind of interaction and discussion of teaching. This is what we hope to encourage. This is what Stanford is all about. This is what our students respond so well to. Um, but there's a lot of food. Festivities are not officially over until 5.30. So please munch, linger, and talk, and enjoy your colleagues as much as we have enjoyed and appreciated having you here. Thank you again. Thank you.